is the Jen single asking for a friend. <laughs> you know, I have realized that this season is going to be the season of penis. I, I mean, I every show, if you think about it, we are on episode three. And I think that I have seen a good six to seven penises. I mean, I have seen a lot, nice penises. Listen, my eyes have been blessed, but I'm just like, I wasn't ready. <laughs> So a few days ago, I went to an early screening of episode three and um, it was Brian Fuller was there, Neil Ga Gaiman or Gaiman, sorry. The Jen was there. So the guy who plays Salim was there. Um, Oliver Jones, why do I want, Orlando Jones was there, forgive me. Um, you tidy, but Daki, Bill Quis, she was there. Um, the dude who played Anubis was there. And I think that's it. There was no Ricky Widow and no, um, <laughs> man, Sweeney. <laughs> we um, did have a little Q&A after we viewed the episode. And uh, even after watching that episode, I knew that I was going to have to watch it like three to four times because it was so much information in this episode. But one thing I will say is I think we may be getting the Sandman. So um, get excited because it, it looks like they were into it. It looks like the dude that played the gen brought it up. I forget, sorry, I I, I, I'm going to call him the dude that played the gin. I know his name, but I, I just don't want to butcher it. <laughs> I'm already butchering your, your tidy's name. So I just don't want to butcher it. But um, he brought it up and they seem to be really into it. And uh, Neil kind of gave a look. So I, th I think it's happening. I think the Sandman is happening. So um, get excited about that because I, I was really excited about that. But anyway, it was really good to just pick the minds of the creators of uh, the, the book and the show. And uh, we are going to find out what the buffalo is. I told them, don't don't spoil it for me, but I just want to know. We keep on seeing these images. Like, are we going to see it soon? And we have about eight more episodes. So I think we're going to be seeing, I think we're going to get what the buffalo means um, pretty soon. Pretty, pretty soon. Because they reassured me about that. But it was a good Q&A. It was nice to just uh, talk to um, the creators and just see a few of the actors there. And what I really liked is that what I really liked about Brian Fuller, I don't, I knew of him as a writer, but I really didn't know uh, his personality. But I, he was really interactive, and he, um, and everybody involved really said that this show was um, a passion project or some, of something that they felt like was really needed now and today. And just, um, I enjoy when creators enjoy the work that they put out. That it's not something that they're putting out to make a buck. It's something that they really care about. And you can tell by this show, you can tell that the people involved care about the quality of work that they are putting out. Because look at what's what's happening. It's, you know, three episodes in and we are still so engaged. I'm somebody who knew very little about everybody involved, basically. And I'm just a fan of everybody. You know what I mean? I am just... I, I am pulled in. So great job to everyone involved. And let's get into this review. This opening scene is the reason why I don't mess with stools. I don't mess with them. If I can't reach it, oh well, it's just going to have to stay up there. Or I'll get a, um, a spatula and I'll just try to get it from like the top shelf and, you know, just pull it down and make sure I don't get hit in the face but I don't mess with stools because this is the way you die look at what happened to that poor lady and she was making whatever that food she was making that needed a touch of cinnamon and now her family ain't never gonna taste it she had to give it to Anubis who is fine can I just say this show has some nice eye candy equal opportunity eye candy as well but I'm just saying as, as a woman's uh, uh, a woman's who, for, who, who prefers the um <laughs> the flesh of a man I am <laughs> really I don't know why I explained it like that I am really thankful that we get like some fine dudes in the show. I don't feel like we've had this for a really long time. Or, or, or like fine men of age, like five men in their 30s. <laughs> yeah. So when watching this, I was just like, who is Anubis? Like the name was so familiar, but I was just like, I don't recognize who this dude is. Um, and I know it was explained that he's like the, uh, or it was later explained that he is the god of the afterlife. But the name, guys, it was like sticking out to me. I'm like Anubis, Anubis, Anubis. And in my research, after I watched the show several times, and my additional research, I found out that Anubis, I didn't recognize him because he's normally depicted as like a jackal. For some reason in the show, they wanted to depict him in human form. And that's fine. But I remember in my last review, I really would like to see, hopefully we get to see the gods in the form that um of the yesteryear you know maybe we get to see the old gods how they appeared back in the day because we get to see the new gods how they appear now but we don't we really get to see we don't really get to see the old gods in their old format because they've kind of adapted to the ways of being 
uh, like forgotten about, so they're kind of like washed up. I would love to see them how they looked back in the day. But if you grew up in the hood, just know that those black dogs with all the jewelry and the robes that was in your grandmother's house that was either standing next to like plants or like um, sit it next to the couch, that's Anubis. <laughs> That's why it was so familiar to me. I was like, who the hell is Anubis? I was just like the dog statues that my grandma has in her house. Anubis, stay woke. Stay woke. You know what? As I get older, I'm starting to, I'm still a Christian. Don't freak out, mom. I'm starting to like research my history a bit more. And it's so weird, but there is so much like, um, African God history within the African American community that we just don't talk about. But it's it's just it's just like within our everyday lives. I think Christianity has pretty much taken over uh, the large part of the African American com community. Um, Islam is second, but Christianity still has a pretty huge ho hold over the uh, over the African American community. And one thing that I've noticed is that in like watching this show and just as just in my study of um, wanting to learn more, because I'm trying to uh, trace my ancestors back. Like I want to, you know, I want to do all that. I'm researching all of that trying to figure out um, I'm American but I really want to know like where I came from you know what I mean like my people didn't just walk over here you know so I just want to know uh what's the origin of Nikki so in that research I'm just finding that there are so many things that are so relatable um with just within my research within uh African uh countries that are you know just just God's beliefs mannerisms dialect like just so many things and I'm just like wow this is where this came from or this is where this came from so it's it's really really interesting to see how things are just mixed and intertwined or probably called something else but this is the uh, the origin that's what I really love about this show is that I'm finding out a lot of things but in those things that I'm finding out, I, I'm realizing that I know of these things, but I know it of another name. You know what I mean? So that's what I really, really like about this show. It makes me think, it makes me study, it makes me research, and it's just really well put together. I don't think the lady who died is like is, is a big part, because she wasn't talked about at the Q&A, but I think that she was just used as a, um, as a way to introduce Anubis into the show. And it was a really great scene. It was... <laughs> I cried too. This show has me crying a lot. And I said before, I'm not a crier, but I, I feel like it pulls things emotionally. Like one thing is like, I'm really like sensitive about my community. So of course that speech that um, Mr. Nancy gave uh, to the African men on the slave ship, just of course it like wrecked me. And then this scene uh, with this lady, this grandmother who was making this meal for her uh, family. And I don't know. And then she starts talking about her Tia and how um, she wants this, she wants to see her tea again because Anubis comes to her. <laughs> Wait, first, the first when he first comes, like he appears like as a man or whatever, just like a normal dude. And she was just like, "This is not the black household. The black people live upstairs." <laughs> I love this show because, and I really, and I really adore the writers' room because the writing is just so real. I used to live in New York City, and I can definitely hear my neighbor saying something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's just really on point. Anyway. He comes to her and she's just like, wait a minute, this is a Muslim household. Why is Anubis coming to me? And he tells her that her grandmother taught her the ways of the old country, which is Egypt, where she was from. And um, so he's he's coming to get her, I guess, to bring her to Tia as a courtesy. So that's where all of this comes from. And then um, when she gets to the end, um, she has to pick a door. Because first she's weighed, and I really, really love this scene. He like rips her heart out of her body and he places her heart down and he places down a feather. And I guess uh, the feather, I forget the, what the, the name of the feather was called, I couldn't pronounce it, but it's actually called something. And if her, Anubis was basically weighing her good deeds and, or just how she used her heart basically. And if the heart, I guess if the heart fell, she would be devoured by this like mix of a, mix of a, a demon that would devour her. I think it was like a crocodile, a hippo, another animal, but that demon would devour her. And I, I guess, take her to like hell. Her heart. And because she did well, the feather didn't falter. So she was able to pick a door where to go. And she was just like, I don't know where to go. You're a good man. Tell me where to go. And so he sends her, he picks a door for her. And then she says, I really want to be sure about this. I hope you're sending me to the right place because you know, my dad used to abuse me. I don't want to go where he is. I don't ever want to see him again. I want to go be with my Tia. Anyway, just the whole scene about the, you know, her, her really yearning for her grandmother. It just wrecked me because I lost my grandmother a few years ago and I'm never going to get over her death. Like she was my world. And so it just, it just pinched a nerve in me. 
in a good way. This is what I like about the show. It's 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 so well written to the point where it just unexpectedly goes to your heart and you're just like, I didn't expect to feel that. I didn't expect to think that. Ah, oh, I like this show. I looked it up. My aunt is the feather, which means truth. And I guess if the feather went higher than the heart or something, she would be devoured by Amorit. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Who was like a crocodile. Just a mixture of these animals that I guess were really big back in the day in Egypt were like scary to them in Egypt or something like that. But he would devour her if she was a bad person. Tea. So initially I thought that the cat was the lady's cat. But when the cat like went to the afterlife with her, I was just like, can cats choose to like die with their owners? So I didn't know what was going on. And then the cat like kicked homegirl into the afterlife. So I was just like, what is going on here? Why is the cat still with Anubis? Looked it up. The cat represents Batset, Bastet. Oh, I'm American. It's, um, Bastet is a Egyptian goddess. Like she's like basically the goddess of women of childbirth and fertility. She protects the home. You know, uh, she clears the home of any diseases or anything like that. She's just basically the domestic goddess. And um, she also assists Anubis in the afterlife. So that was her taking the form. I don't know if we'll see her in full form, in human form in the show, but I know that that's what the cat represented. Get Chernabog's home and Shadow Moon is still alive. He hasn't killed him yet. I think he's waiting for Dawn or something to kill uh, Shadow Moon. But while Shadow Moon is sleeping, I don't know how he could sleep when he's about to get his brains bust open. But anyway, while he's sleeping, he has a dream. And in this dream, he sees the youngest Zariah sister, which is uh, Zariah Polochnaya. I could be wrong. I'm just going to call her baby Zariah. Um, he has a dream and he meets her and she's saying that she's the she's like the evening star. Like she guards the night and she's watching the constellations and she's watching like that hound that wants to eat the constellations and she's talking to Shadow Moon and she like gives him protection, which is which is the moon and she pulls the moon out of the sky and it turns into a coin and she hands it to him before i go on does anybody remember a story like that back in the day it was this fantasy like fairy tale. i remember reading this book when i was just like a little kid i remember reading it in the children's sections of my local library in philadelphia and i remember like not this scene, but I remember this like goddess taking a coin, taking the moon out and it turns into a coin and she's given to somebody. But then like um, in an interview with Neil, he said that he made that sister up. So I'm just like, wait a minute. Is this taken from something? Because I remember this. I remember taking the moon, turning into a coin, giving to the dude for good luck. If this has to, he had to have brought that up because he said that he created the sister. I don't know if he created the tale or, um, the tale of somebody, one of the a goddess or whoever taking the moon out and turning it to a coin and giving it to a man for good luck. I remember this story. I remember there was a book about it when I was a kid. It was like a fairy tale book. I remember what it looks like and everything. It was like green and pink and the lady was wearing a purple dress. She had blonde hair and she was giving, she had the moon in her hand and she was giving it to a soldier. I remember this story. If you remember this story, you know what I'm talking about, please put the book in the comment section below because I remember this. So I was a little thrown off when uh, Neil said that he cre he just created the sister because um, in the Slavic tales it's normally uh, two Zariah sisters. He made up the third sister, but did he make up taking the moon and turning it into a coin? I don't think so. She gives Shadow Moon this coin and it's basically good luck, but she gives it to him only if he can give her something that she wants. And she's a virgin, right? So she wants a kiss, so she chooses him to kiss. Smart girl. And she just takes the kiss from him. And then she, after she kisses him, she's just like, ah, oh, kissing is disgusting. But I can understand why people do it. Same here, girl. Same here. It's nasty. But when you do it, it's just like, <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, Shadow Moon takes the coin. He's feeling himself now because he has like this good luck. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, Pola Chanaya, baby Zariah's sister, she said to him, she said, you had the sun once. And now I'm going to give you the moon. Don't lose it. So I'm thinking that maybe the sun was the coin that he took from Matt Sweeney that he dropped in his wife's grades. Maybe, grade. Maybe that was the uh, the lucky coin. Maybe that was the sun that she was speaking of. I could be wrong, but I just, I remember seeing that coin and it looked like a sun before it sunk into her grave. So maybe that could be what she was talking about. Anyway, Shadow Moon is feeling himself. So he takes this uh, lucky coin and he goes and he played, he asked Chernobog for a rematch on checkers. 
So they uh, go and play checkers. He wins. And then Chernobyl is just like, I'll go. But so he reluctantly agrees to participate in, I guess, this war that Odin wants to do. Cloris Leachman, to me, is the obvious star of this show. All of her scenes, I'm so engaged in. She's so hilarious. She's ridiculously talented. This character, she, I don't know if it's how the character is supposed to be portrayed from what I've read, from what I've read she nails it to the T. And uh, she's, I just really enjoy all the scenes that she's in. So anyway, her and Mr. Wednesday, I guess, had a little something back in the day. I didn't really have time to research that relationship. I'm pretty sure it comes, Neil pulled that relationship from somewhere. But they had a little something back in the day and Mr. Wednesday is like trying to flirt with her. And then he makes this comment that I was just like, oh, I don't need to know that. But you know, I do like, you know, older people still being frisky because he says, um, he says he wants her to go for a walk with him. She's just like, it's going to rain. And he was like, when did you ever mind getting a little wet? And I was like, oh, what? So while they're out walking in the rain, getting wet, uh, Mr. Wednesday kisses her. Ah, this was so adorable. So they kiss and like, she's in the kiss for a minute, but then she's just like, I can taste something on you. And <laughs> Mr. Wednesday is like, war. So I don't know what that means. Like, the people who Neil took this from, is that something that she has? Like, uh, the older Zariah sister, does she have, like, this thing where she can, like, taste something? Or is it just her being able to read his fortune? And what does the rain mean? I'm, I'm telling you, every second of this show, it has a meaning. So I know the rain means something. I know that it's something up with her being able to taste his like future or decision, something. I know that that means something. If you know what that means, please put it in the comment section below. I really, I knew that that was something that I missed. I just couldn't find anything on it in enough time and I didn't want to uh, keep on waiting to put this review up. I want to um, get, I'm trying to get them up quicker but i told you guys before i have to watch just a few times and do my additional research before i can even give a proper review what i love about this whole bank robbing scene is that we get to see the trickster of odin come back like i didn't really know when i watched the first few episodes i didn't really know a lot about odin so i didn't know that this was his thing but now that i realize that this is one of the traits of odin i'm seeing it happen like there's a scene where he's like he gives somebody a dollar it turns into a 20 He's like playing the security guard. He has the whole thing planned out. First of all, this was such a great idea. I was just like, <laughs> is somebody going to really do this? Because you know what? If I lived another life, eh, okay. <laughs> Smart idea. So apparently the coin that Sweeney gave to Shadow Moon is his lucky coin. So that's like all of his luck. So we get this scene where he's like really cocky and he's in like this bathroom and the owner of the bar is like, you got to get out of here. And he's like, no. And he's like really cockily like drinking a, a henny. I don't know some alcohol and she shoots it and he gets like a little concerned because he's so lucky like nothing is ever supposed to happen to him so then we see him like walking along the side of the road and he gets picked up by I forget his name but he was a dude from the kids in the hall one of my favorite shows growing up which come to think about I probably shouldn't have been watching it at that age anyway <laughs> shapes a lot of my uh, comedy today though but anyway while he's driving him he like gets in an accident, a pole goes through his head, he gets knocked over, and then while he's, um, while the car is getting towed or something, somebody says, this is not his lucky day. And then it hits him that he gave his coin to Shadow Moon because he starts looking for the coins and he realizes that he gave the coin away to Shadow Moon because that explains him not having all this luck. So now for me, somebody who does, who didn't know this, I now know that Sweeney's power is in his lucky coin or maybe part of his power. Then we get to the gin scene, and I'm going to tell you something, girl. This scene has so many twists and turns, and um, I'm actually shocked that it was like the most talked about thing. I I'm telling you, man, I just feel like I grew up in like some bubble, because like, I don't know. I like grew up in Philly, but I think I grew up in a probably a really, uh, well, Philly is pretty liberal, and I grew up in, the, I guess, a really liberal home, so um, gay sex ain't nothing new. <laughs> like, gay people have sex. <laughs> So it wasn't like a big deal, but it was like everybody was talking about the scene. And I mean, it was shocking to me be because of the end. Like the, what was shocking to me about the scene was I was trying to figure out what was going on with the gin and Celine. The gay thing, it just, I don't, man, I just have a totally different perspective. I'm not trying to puff myself up, you know what I mean? Because I, I don't want it to come off like that, but I just, I didn't 
think that it would have that much of a reaction. I actually thought that maybe the Bilky Bilk is seen and the first episode would have had a bigger reaction than this but even in the comic sections of the comments section of uh some reviews like people are just being really childish and I'm just like you missed the whole point of the scene the entire point we meet this guy named Salim who has a horrible life this this um this episode was pretty sad <laughs> come to think of it, it was a pretty sad episode from the lady dying to just Salim and his horrible horrible life who I read about in the book had an even worse life than was depicted on this on this episode so whew, thank god the writers went a little easy on him anyway he's having like a terrible day his life is just terrible and this day just culminates with how horrible his life is and he gets into this taxi and he's talking to um, this guy who was from his country because the man gets in almost gets in accidents and starts speaking in his language and so they start conversing that way when he realized that he's somebody from his home and while he's driving I guess a uh, park the gin I'm giving it away the gin oh, you guys saw it already the gin falls asleep and he goes to wake him up but there's like this moment where they're like watching his hand and he's slowly putting his hand on his shoulder and I, I guess that like meant something I don't I'm telling you guys I don't think it was like gay I think there was something deeper here and I'll um I'll talk about it a little bit later but anyway he puts his hand on his shoulder and the gin wakes up but his glasses have fallen down so um Salim could see like the fire in his eyes and then he starts talking and the gin is like embarrassing he starts talking about how you know he used to he used to hear about them as a kid and then they just have like this really a uh, big comp this and then they just have like this uh, sweet conversation and they have like this moment of bonding and Salim like touches him and there's like a transference of something like just a comforting touch and uh, he gets out of the car and then another lady gets in and then he looks down in the car while Salim is getting out. And he looks down in the gym and he said, I'm in room 318. I said, baby, it's about to go down. <laughs> so the gin gets up <laughs> and they go up into the room and they're holding hands. But again, I didn't see gay. I saw like two people who are full of pain just comforting each other. I don't know. I just didn't see it like that. But anyway... They get to the room and you know what? I'm going to just have to be, um, <laughs> as my mother say, in the flesh for a second. Let me tell you something. The gin was blessed. Okay. I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> we found out at the, because there was one lady at the Q&A who was really like, she really wanted to know if, that, if the gin's penis was real. Not going to lie. I did too, but I have class. I wasn't going to ask. But we found out that like all of the penises are like either CGI or prosthetics. And I guess, you know, you, I guess you got to make the actor feel comfortable. But did Bill Keys have like CGI coochie? You know what I'm saying? Like men always getting a break. Anyway, um, I done lost my train of thought because I thought it's thinking about that penis. At this moment where Salim looks upon the gin and he's just like enamored by him. Just enamored by the gin. And the gin looks at him just naked, you know, like no glasses, nothing covering his eyes. And he says, I don't grant wishes. And then Salim is like, but you are a wish. And it's a, it was a really beautiful scene because I felt like they both needed each other in a really, really special way. Like they were both, t they had both bonded on the fact that they had terrible lives and they were just coming together to share this moment. And um, then uh, they they have sex. Uh, Salim uh, bottoms, if you will, uh, for the, um, for the gin. And while he's, uh, you know, <laughs> Busting it open. I'm trying to like find words to say, but I, I might just have to go on my lingo. Salim is bottoming for the gin, and while he's busting it open, the gin is ejaculating like fire into his body, and the fire is coming out of his eyes and out of his body. And I'm thinking that, um, that maybe that fire, it wasn't just fire, it was power, you know? Um, I, I think he's transferring some kind of power, and it's just a really, uh, it's like it's a really intimate moment but it's a really smart moment because we see then how the gin or how the genie gets out of the bottle you know what i mean because they end they end up switching places so after the gin you know uh put his um uh, power in Celine's bussy he leaves and Celine like wakes up the next day and he's just like looking for him and he doesn't find the gin but he finds his clothes and then he leaves the house and he puts on the glasses and he's like looking through his um ID and he's realizing that he is now a different person so remember when he ejaculated <laughs> 
ignited that fire into him. He was granting his wish. He said he didn't grant wishes. And I'm guessing maybe the djinn want, wants to try the heart of a person first because this is basically Salim's wish. He's he's now living a new life. So he doesn't have to live that horrible life where his family hates him, where he can't be his true self. And now he's able to be like this taxi driver, just start a whole new life. But to that I say, how horrible does your life have to be for you to have a wish or a desire to live a life as a New York taxi driver? Because that's what I thought it was. Was it New York City or any big city taxi driver? Who would want that life? People who do that have to do it. So for him to want to choose that life over what he already has, Salim had a terrible life. Anyway, my take on the gen scene, I didn't look at it as gay sex. I looked at it as two people who were in pain, who were bonding, and I looked at it as a gen transferring power into somebody desperately in need for a change. And um, I wasn't grossed out by it. I mean, the show was pretty graphic. It's on stars, but uh, it didn't make me feel a certain kind of way. Um, I was impressed with the gin, <laughs> even if it was CGI. But yeah, I just, I thought it was, I thought it was really beautiful. I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm a minority, literally. But I just, I thought it was really, really beautiful. But at the Q&A, Neil had said that it was necessary for this scene to be as long as it was because these two characters come back in a big way. I don't think they, they I think they were minor characters in the book. So the way that they are coming back in this show was really important. So that's why that scene was really important. And that's why I was so drawn out because these two characters, although they weren't really big in the book, they're big in this show. So that was really good to see. Then we head back to Mr. Wednesday and Shadow Moon and they are still getting their plot together to rob this bank and Shadow is like tripping out because uh, Mr. Wednesday, Mr. Wednesday is like getting in his head and he's telling him, you know, to think about snow, to think about snow. And what do you know, as Shadow Moon is thinking about snow, although he was skeptical in the beginning, he let, he releases it and he lets it go and he just starts sneaking, thinking about snow and it actually starts to snow. Hear me out. I think that Shadow Moon is Native American. And th th the one thing that set me off on this path of him being Native American was the buffalo. Now he's like controlling the weather. And that is something that I grew up knowing about Native American people, that they are really in tune with the, with the earth and they have um, abilities to really get the, you know, the winds to sing a certain way. You know what I mean? So this is why I'm thinking that Shadow Moon is like black, like a black Native American, you know what I mean? Like he's like Blackfoot, okay? That's is what I'm think this is what I'm thinking is uh Shadow Moon. I really, really believe this because there's just too many things that are coming up now. I'm just like, he's definitely black because Mr. Wednesday talks about his mom having an afro. But now with him seeing the buffalo in his dreams and you know, him controlling the weather, I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. How multiracial is he? Also, did you guys see the dude that was making the copies? I think that was Jesus because there are a lot of shots going to this dude while he's making the copies as Mr. Wednesday is talking about Jesus when um, him and Shadow Moon are discussing. He's just saying that there's a lot of Jesus. There's a Greek Jesus. There are, there's a black Jesus. There's a, a Native... Did he say Native American? Puerto Rican Jesus? Something, but he named several Jesus. Chinese Jesus? I don't know, but he named several Jesuses and uh, Shadow Moon was like, that's a lot of Jesus. And Mr. Wednesday was like, there's a lot of need for Jesus. But there was this whole monologue about Jesus. And then there were a couple of cuts to this guy who looks like he could be the conservative idea of Jesus. He also looks like the guy who was going to, who was said to have played Jesus on the IMDb, because I look up the IMDb. So he looks like him on the IMDb. So I'm thinking that he's Jesus because I do know that Jesus is going to make an appearance on this show in two episodes. And that guy looks like him. So I think the guy making the copies was Jesus. Did you guys also notice Mr. Wednesday's eyes? I'm starting to notice his eye a lot more now that I'm doing research on him. And um, if you don't know why his eye is missing, uh, Mr. Wednesday is also the god Odin who is like a trickster, but he's also somebody who does a, who is, who basically, he basically does the most for knowledge. So he'll starve himself, he'll harm himself, like gouge out an eye. It's all, he'll, he'll do all these things for wisdom and knowledge. So that eye that he has is a fake eye, it's a glass eye. That's why there's a clear difference from the left eye to the right eye, I think. But I know that one of them is glass and um, that is just another sign that Mr. Wednesday is Odin. Also, another Easter egg. If you've watched this several times like I have, when Shadow Moon and Mr. Wednesday are in the bank, I, I didn't know what it meant at first, but I'm just like, what is going on? 
when at the end of this, when they're leaving out at the end of the security video, because I'm telling you guys, nothing in the show happens for no reason. And I'm just like, why do they keep on cutting back to like them being in a regular scene and then them being watched on the security camera? And then it hit me. The eye at the end is media and she's watching Mr. Wednesday in Shadow Moon. And I guess um, the guy in the top hat is another god. I don't know what god it is, but I'm thinking it's the guy who played um, Michael J. Fox's father him mr show i think that's his name i think that could be him because I, I feel like he was dressed like that i could be wrong there are so many gods on the show i have no idea who's who uh besides the ones that i knew about before i came into the show so i guess those two gods are the new gods and they're watching him oh my head hurts then we get this scene where uh, Shadow Moon is like asking Mr. Wednesday, he's like, did I make it snow? So Shadow Moon is starting to believe. So I guess we'll see in each episode him become more and more believable. And I think the belief that he gives Mr. Wednesday gives him power because no God has power without faith. You know what I mean? Without faith of believers. So I'm thinking that's what's giving Mr. Wednesday his powers, but I could be wrong. But anyway, while they're driving, Shadow Moon stops abruptly because he almost hits, um, I think it was two wolves. It could be one. This is why I think it may have been two. It's because just like the Ravens, there are two wolves that are always seen in old like Celtic depictions of Odin. It could either be that or it could be Fenair who is a wolf god he's like the god of wolves he it's there's a fortune that's foretold that Fenair kills odin so maybe oh or mr wednesday so maybe that could be with what the um eldest the riot sister saw when she said that um mr wednesday will die with every, she, when she told his fortune she was just like this thing that you're doing you will die and he's like he he doesn't really take it seriously so i'm guessing that I don't, I'm guessing wrong. I don't know. But I feel like it's either the wolves that are, who are his protectors, or it's either Fenair who's going to kill him. I'm thinking it might just be Fenair. But then I'm thinking about it now. Odin wasn't, he kind of liked seeing him. He kind of liked seeing the wolf or wolves. He kind of liked seeing them. So I'm, I don't know. It could be one or the other though. It could be one or the other. I'm thinking it's Fenair. Hmm. Then we cut to Sweeney, <laughs> who is digging up Laura's grave. I think I forgot to mention this, but Sweeney runs into Shadow Moon and Mr. Wednesday. He runs up to Shadow Moon and he's just like, where's my coin? You have my lucky coin. And Shadow Moon's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, the coin that you took that I gave you or whatever. And he's like, oh, it's in my wife's grave. You got to go find it there. So Sweeney goes to Laura's grave and he's digging up her grave to find his lucky coin because that's his luck or at least a part of his power. And he gets all the way down to her casket and you see like a hole where the coin used to be. I guess the coin burnt through that. And then he pulls up the uh, cat, opens the casket and it's empty. And then you cut to a scene of Shadow Moon entering his home. And if you notice, there's always a lot of like America, land of the beautiful, land of the free, all types of America land references in this show. Shadow Moon enters his room and when he enters his room, sitting on the bed is dead Laura, who's dead no more. And she looks at him, she's like, hi, Poppy. And I mean, my mind is so blown. I had to stop my research there. I was just like, I can't. It's it's so much information from this freaking show. I'm telling you, after this show wraps, I'm going to watch it all over again. I'm probably going to get a whole new idea of it and, and you know, just be kicking myself because I didn't say it in this review or that review or whatever. But it's a great show. I'm really loving it. It looks as if next week we're going to get a lot of Laura and Anubis. So that's really interesting. I'm just interested to see what happens with the rest of the series. I know a lot of people had issues with uh, Salim and the uh, Gen C, but that's a different kind of people. Then there are other people who had an issue with um, this episode because they felt like it was dragging and that it was slow. And to that I say... Um, I understand. I really, really do. Because the first time I watched it, I was just like, this is really different. But the difference is that the first two shows were so powerful. Really, really powerful. And we get the introduction of um, just really interesting gods. You know what I mean? We get the first introduction of Mr. Wednesday and all the other gods. And then we get Mr. Nancy. And so those show, those two shows are very uh, powerful. I feel like this was the information show. I feel like this show and the next episode will be the information show. And then we'll get back to the action. I think that's what a lot of people miss is that there wasn't 
any action really in this show and in the first two episodes there's so much action going on there's so many colorful characters and this one is just really really slow but it's giving a lot of information and it's panning out a lot of the story to us so that we can follow along without being caught up in the action so uh just stick with it guys this show and i believe the next show is probably going to be another informative show but they only have eight episodes so i guarantee you the action will be back hopefully we'll find out who saved uh shadow moon from being lynched um uh, hopefully we'll see technical boy again and i think we may get to see who mr show is or whoever the dude with the top hat was um watching uh, shadow moon and mr wednesday in the um thing so it looks like we're going to be um getting a lot of new gods and probably um more in-depth information concerning the gods that we have met so far and that we'll meet in this season because American Gods has been picked up for a season two. Thanks to you. Thanks to me. Thanks to the fans. Okay, we have put this show on the map, baby. Yes, come through fans. And so they have a season two already. Like this is huge for them to have a season two by the second episode. And I'm telling you, Mr. Nancy got them a season two. So you better uh, up Orlando Jones's uh, paycheck because that monologue, babe, B, set Twitter ablaze. Anyway, I'm really excited. I'm really, really happy for this show. Um, I'm so interested in it. I'm so interested in uh, just the relationships that I'm making because of it uh, outside of YouTube and here. You guys are so great and you're giving so, so much great information and I'm very, very thankful for everyone who takes the time to write comments to give me uh, a little bit more information and just dialogue back and forth because uh, this show is such a, it's a great learning process uh, for me. Um, and just really interesting and fun. Anywho, that is my review. If you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you have any other takes on the episode or any additional tea that is not a spoiler, please put it down in the comment section below. You can spoil this episode, but I don't want to be spoiled for the rest of the season. Um, I'm, I am ordering the book, so maybe I'll do a review of the book um, once the, a season is over. Maybe I'll do that. Who knows? But I'm enjoying the show. I'm enjoying what we do here, and I will see you for the next episode of American Gods. Bye, guys. Love you. <laughs> Oh, sorry if this is a little bit long. I feel like there's so much information going on uh, in this episode. And we'll probably have a lot of information in the next episode. So that that next review will probably be a, be a bit longer. Um, but I think we're going to get into the action pretty soon. So after that, my videos will go back to being 20 minutes. But there's so much information in this freaking show that I just can't skip over moments. And I like to discuss them because I may have the wrong answer you know and i want to be well informed for this show and if you have the right answer or if you have a different perspective i want to hear it so anyway thanks for watching i'll see you soon bye guys